We'd like to welcome you to our third high school quiz bowl. It's being recorded in Guilford, Connecticut on April 26, 2014. It, this is our third quiz bowl, and this is the third time that the Guilford Savings Bank is sponsoring our program. They have been very generous, the Guilford Savings Bank. Also, Lenny and Joe's Fishtail Restaurants, it's the third time that they are sponsoring our program, and they have been very generous. We'd like to thank them. Let me go over the guide let me go over the guidelines of the program, then we'll introduce the students after this. There'll be two rounds. Each round will have five categories. Each category will have eight questions. The team answering at least five questions out of eight in each category will receive a bonus question. If the team receiving the bonus question cannot answer the question correctly, the opposing team will be offered the chance to answer it. If both teams do not answer five questions in a category, the question will become a, a, to, the, will become a toss up question. We have a new feature for this third quiz bowl. And we call it two random toss up double point questions, double point bonus questions worth 40 points. They may be on any subject. Now here's how we're going to try to run the buzzer system. Right now it is not armed. After I read a question or show a question on the screen on the monitor, then we'll arm the buzzer. So give me a chance to, as they do on TV Jeopardy, give, give us a chance to get the questions out. There'll also be, there'll be one video and uh, that will come during the course of the competition. Now at this point, I would like the students to introduce themselves to us, not to us, to the audience. And uh, I'd like to have the students introduce themselves and possibly say what are their plans for the summer and what are their plans for September. Your name, please. Um, I'm Carson Sperry. I go to Guilford High School and I plan to attend UMass Amherst this fall. I'm, I'm Daniel McCloskey. I, uh, I attend uh, Guilford High School and uh, this summer I plan to go to Boy Scout camp. My name is Sonic Capaccio. I'm a sophomore at Guilford High School and next fall I will continue to attend school there. Good, very good. Daniel Han. Uh, my name is Coley Fahey. I'm a senior at Daniel Han High School and um, in the fall, I'll be attending Loyola University in Maryland. I'm Jen, uh, Darius Mastagami. Um, I'm a senior, and in the fall, I'll be attending Johns Hopkins University, also in Maryland. Uh, I'm Jason Tung. I'm a senior, and in the fall, I will be attending Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Very, very impressive. Very nice. Let's go to the next slide, please, Sid. The categories for round one will be the Presidency, Geography, Potpourri, U.S. History 1945 to 1969, and Literature. The next slide will have the first question. After only four months in office, he was shot on July 2, 1881. When he was shot, former President Lincoln's son Robert was at the scene. He was our 20th president. He died on September 19th, 1881. Garfield? Yes. Put up the next slide, please. Um, Sid, next slide, please. He was the second president to be impeached, but not convicted. He graduated from Yale University School of Law. He was a young governor of Arkansas. Bill Clinton? Bill Clinton? Yes. Let's go to the uh, next no, question. Sorry. It would be slide 15. Slide 15. He served in the military in World War I. He made the decision to drop the atomic bombs in World War II. He was president at the start of the Korean War. Um, Harry Truman. Harry Truman. Harry S. Truman. Sid, please go to the next one. He attended Choate. Now it's called Choate Rosemary Hall in Wallingford, Connecticut. He graduated from Harvard 
University in 1940. He served in the United States Navy during World War II. He's listed as the author of Profiles in Courage, but it was actually probably written by Ted Sorensen. Um, John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy. He was born in Honolulu, Hawaii. He graduated from Columbia University. He graduated from Harvard University Law School. As a young person, he was known as Barry. Barack Obama. Barack Obama. You have to go back. Oh, wait. You have to go to slide 20. Wait a minute. Maybe I made a mistake. Give me a second. I, I made a mistake here. Um, you, you were correct. I, I was wrong. Slide, slide 23. Slide 23. Slide 23 it is. Okay. The next slide will have a 20-point bonus question. The team with at least five correct answers in this category will have the first chance to answer the bonus question. Did any? All right, so this would be from Madison. You don't have to ring in then. Um, so the next slide would be 24. He was the youngest person to be sworn into office as president. He was a New York City police commissioner. He was a United States Navy assistant secretary. He was elected governor of New York. Theodore Roosevelt? Theodore Roosevelt, yes. Uh, here's some interesting uh, information. T.R. at swearing in was 42 years old and 322 days. John F. Kennedy was 43 years old and 236 days. You ask about President Obama. He was about 47 years and 169 days old. Okay, let's go to slide 26, please. This category will consist of eight toss-up questions valued at 10 points each. It will have one bonus question worth 20 points. It's on geography, and you will need the monitor. So, Sid, please put 27 up, please. This is the longest river in North America. This river flows from Minnesota to Louisiana. Mississippi River? That Mississippi River, yes. May we have um, slide 29. It is the longest stream in New England. It flows from northern New Hampshire Vermont, Massachusetts, and Connecticut to Long Island Sound. Uh, the Connecticut River. Exactly. Connecticut River. Right. No, no, no. No, go back. Um, that would be 33 would be the next slide. Name the country with the X's. The Democratic Republic of the Congo. Hey, that's exactly right, by the way. The Democratic Republic of the Congo. It used to be called Z the Republic of Zaire. You are correct. Um, slide 33, please. In what city is the Alamo located? It was involved in the Texas movement of independence against Santa Ana. San Antonio. San Antonio. Yes, yes. And we have slide 37, please. The Grand Canyon is located in which state? You have to clear the system. Yeah. Joel, clear the buzzer. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, Arizona. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, that's correct. I messed up here. Yes, that's correct. Um, let's see. May we have slide 37, please? Which state is located where the X is placed? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Wyoming. Wyoming. The entire state only has a population of about a half a million. Let's go to slide 39, please. Identify the South American country where the X is located. Oh. Uh, Argentina. 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 Name the country where the X's are located. Pakistan. Pakistan. Very unstable country that has atomic weapons. Um, slide 43, please. 
the next slide will have part A of a 20 point bonus question for category two. Did either team get five? Right, Madison, this is the first part of this question for 10 points. And then the next part will be for 10 points. So, so sit slide 44, please. Give a name of this famous landmark in the city and country that is located in. It's uh, the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France. The Eiffel Tower in Paris, France, yes. Now, the next question is a little more challenging. Next question for 10 points. This river northwest of Dijon flows in a northwesterly direction through Paris, France, before emptying into the English Channel at Le Havre. The river is 485 miles long. What is the name of this river? The Seine. The Seine River? Seine River, yes. S-E-I-N-E, -E, yes. Now we're going to go on to uh, potpourri. <coughs> Just let me get myself organized here. That's right. Are you Sid is right. Um, so potpourri, we're starting a new category now. So may we have slide 49, please, Sid? He is a senior U.S. Senator from Connecticut. Um, Richard Blumenthal. Richard Blumenthal. You might find this interesting. The August 17, 212 Connecticut Post listed his wealth at $112 million. His wife is uh, part of a large real estate. Uh, her, his wife owns a family owns a lot of real estate, and they're into the billions, actually. But he's listed as... 112 million, not, not too shabby. Right, let's go to the next question, please. This person was not elected vice president or president. However, he served in both offices. He graduated from the University of Michigan. He graduated from the Yale School of Law. Name him. Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford. He seemed to be a, a, seemed to be a very, very nice man. I think you, you're, the students, I think, are too young to remember him or know of him. But let's go to the next. The next is going to be a 40-point bonus question. This is one of those random bonus questions. The next slide will have the first random bonus question, and it will be worth 40 points. Who was the first vice president of the United States to resign his position? Um, um, Lyndon Johnson. No. Can the other team take that? Should I read the question again? Mm -hmm. Who was the first vice president of the United States to resign his position? I take a guess. There's no, there's no minuses. All right. Uh, John C. Calhoun. Lyndon Johnson never resigned as, as president, by the way. Um, let's go to the next slide, getting back on track now. He is credited with the discovery of the polio vaccine. In 1955, it was announced that the vaccine was safe and effective. I was a freshman in high school. Clear the system. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Jonas Salk. Yes, yes. Jonas Salk, J-O-N-A-S. I didn't hear you at first, but yes, you're absolutely correct. And there he is getting an award. Let's get to the uh, next question, please. I took, I took this picture. He is the founder and CEO of Amazon.com. Uh, should I give a, a hint? Is that allowed? No? OK. No? Jeff Bezos I was going to give a hint of drones. He was in the news about having drones to deliver packages and so forth. Um, uh, at any rate, so it was Jeff Bezos. Let's go to slide 60. This newspaper publisher is said to have helped bring about the Spanish-American War of 1898 by the yellow press style of writing in his newspapers. He was expelled from Harvard College because of crude antics. His castle in St. Simeon, California, is a tourist attraction today. Samuel Gompers? No, no. 
the other side take it? William Randolph Hearst. William Randolph Hearst. All right. Sid, may we have slide 62, please? Marissa Meyer, Mayer is the CEO of what internet-related company? Uh, Yahoo. Yahoo. Yep. Yes. May we have slide 65, please? He and Paul Allen founded the Microsoft company. He is worth an estimated 56 to 70 billion with a B. He and his wife Melinda are also known for charitable work. Claire. Claire. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Bill Gates. Bill Gates, yes. William Henry Gates III. All right. The next slide, 66. He was the first black president of South Africa. From 1964 to 1982, he was in prison at Robben Island Prison off of Cape Town. Uh, who is Nelson Mandela? Who, who was, well, we're not in jeopardy. You don't have to do the whole, but yeah, that's right. Who was, who was Nelson Mandela? You're absolutely correct. And the only thing I have in common with Alex Trebek, we were both born on July 22nd. That's, that's it. Uh, next question. Next slide, please. Next slide will have the 20-point bonus question. Did um, either side get five? Okay. Then this will be a toss-up question. So slide 69, please. And you have a pen and you have paper. Olivia purchased a new car for $32,000 and received a discount of $2,500 on the vehicle. With a 6% sales tax on the purchase price, how much will Olivia have to pay for her new car? Excuse me. Thirty-three thousand eight hundred dollars. No. Did I take it? That's what you Once again, there are no minuses, so you can take a shot at it. Okay, that would be time. That's a good point. Uh, it would come out to thirty-one thousand two hundred and seventy dollars. Let's go on to slide seventy-one. The next slide. Uh, the next slide will have question one of category four. So let's put this slide seventy-two up there, please. In the nineteen forty-eight presidential election, what Southern Democrat? ran as a state's rights or Dixiecrat candidate. He was from South Carolina and a segregationist. He served in the U.S. Senate as a Democrat for many years. In 1964, he was elected as a Republican. He died in 2003. Uh, Strom Thurmond? That's exactly correct, by the way. There's a, there's a little uh, interesting fact note that uh, put the slide up there. He was a segregationist. That's an interesting little fact note. All right, the next slide will have the, sec the second toss-up 40-point bonus question. So this will be either team, um, you know, either team can buzz in. The next slide will have the second toss-up random bonus question worth 40 points. May we have slide 75, please? Sales for a business were $3 million more the second year than the first. And the sales for the third year were double the sales for the second year. If sales for the third year were $38 million, what were sales in millions of dollars for the first year? This will give a little more time on. Can you uh, clear the system? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, no. I'm sorry. 16 million? Exactly, exactly, yes. All right, let's go to slide 77, please. The Chicago Daily Tribune was so certain 
that Harry Truman lost the 1948 presidential election, that they wrongly printed that his main Republican opponent had won the election. Who was the actual Republican loser in the 1948 election? Dewey? Thomas Dewey, yes, Thomas Dewey. That's a famous, famous picture. Uh, the newspaper got it wrong. Let's go to Sid, uh, slide 79, please. In 1953, President Eisenhower nominated him to be Chief Justice of the United, of the United States. Among the famous cases decided during his time at the U.S. Supreme Court were Miranda versus Arizona and Gideon versus Wainwright. Earl Warren. Exactly. And here's something kind of interesting. Once the person is confirmed, the president can't do anything about it. And General Eisenhower, I can't use the language that he used. Uh, he was not happy with this appointment after he became Chief Justice. But it's a family show. Uh, let's go to slide 81. During the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962, what leader of the Soviet Union did young President Kennedy have to deal with? The Soviet leader lost his position as a result of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Khrushchev? Nikita Khrushchev, yes. Nikita Khrushchev, yes. Can we go to slide 83, please? Following the death of President Kennedy on November 22, 1963, who was sworn in as a new president? He was a tall Texan who had been a leader in the U.S. Senate before becoming vice president in 1961. LBJ? LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson, exactly. Now, I want you to be a little bit patient with the with the next, because I'm going to show a video. It will run 60 seconds. So just, just be patient, please. Um, what, what, what Republican ran against Lyndon Johnson in 1964? LBJ's campaign ran a famous attack ad against his opponent. Even though the Democrats only paid to have it shown once, it was played over and over again. And the next slide will have the will have this fame. You think, if you think elections are dirty today, look at this act. Other, or we must die. Vote for President Johnson on November 3rd. The stakes are too high for you to stay home. Well, we had a little technical glitch, so we'll go on to uh, Category 4, Question 7. May we have uh, slide 88, please, Sid? He led a march in Washington, August 28, 1963. At least 200,000 demonstrators of all races flocked to Washington, D.C. He said, I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. Name of this civil rights leader. Uh, Martin Luther King, Jr. Exactly, exactly. All right, so, uh, we're ready for the next question, slide 90, please. He became the first African American to be appointed to the United States Supreme Court. As an attorney, he argued the Brown versus the Board of Education case before the Supreme Court. Marshall? Yes, Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall. The next slide will have the category four bonus question. Did either team get by? I said this will be a toss up, and let's go on to slide 93 then, please. March 31st, 1968, President Lyndon Johnson shocked the nation 
by stating he would not run for president in 1968. What man did become the Democratic candidate in 1968? He lost the race in a landslide. Could you name this person? Hubert Humphrey. That's, that's good. Hubert Horatio Humphrey. That's, that's good. May we have slide 95, please? The next slide will have question one dealing with literature. So we're going into a different category. And may we have slide 96, please? The thousand injuries of Fortunato I had borne as best I could. But when he ventured upon insult, this is the opening line of what short story by Edgar Allan Poe? The Castle of Amontillado. Yes. Yes. We're going on to the next question, slide 98. By the rude bridge that arched the flood, their flag to April's breeze unfurled. Here once the embattled farmer stood and fired the shot heard round the world. These are the opening words to Ralph Waldo Emerson's famous poem. Can you name it? The shot heard round the world? No. Oh. No, it's the Concord Hymn by Ralph Waldo Emerson. All right, we'll go on to the next slide, which is slide 100. So fallen, so lost, the light withdrawn, which once he wore, the glory from his gray hair is gone forevermore. These are the opening words of what John Greenleaf Whittier poem. No. Inkerbot, Inkerbot. This poem was dealing with a speech made by Daniel Webster. Right, let's go to the next category. Uh, next question, please. When he was nearly 13. Well, I'm, right, I'm sorry, well, I didn't know. I didn't so, know so, so, it's okay. I, I didn't. So let me read the thing and okay. you'll, you'll have a chance. When he was nearly 13, my brother Jim got his arm badly broken at the elbow. When it healed and Jem's fears of never being able to play football were assuaged, he was seldom self-conscious about his injury. Yes. To kill a mockingbird. To kill a mockingbird. Yes. So that, that worked out fine. So no problem. Sure. Um, Sid, may we ha have question uh, slide one hundred and four, please? These are the opening lines of which Shakespearean play, of which Shakespeare play rather, Act One, Prologue. Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona, where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet, yes. Romeo and Juliet. Excuse me, we have slide 106, please. Are you way ahead of me? These are the opening lines to which novel? If you really want to hear about it, the first thing you probably want to know is where I was born and what my lousy childhood was like and how my parents were occupied and all before they had me and all that David Copperfield kind of crap. But I don't feel like going into it if you want to know the truth. Catcher in the Rye? The Catcher in the Rye. Yes. And we'll go to the slide. 108, please, Sid. The following are the opening lines of which novel? It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epic of belief. The Tale of Two Cities. Tale of Two Cities, exactly. Exactly. Um, all this happened, more or less, the above is the opening line of which novel? I decide no. The Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. Uh, the, did either side, I don't think, the, no, so let, the next slide will have the 20 point bonus question. So either side may speak up. Bonus question. 
this question. These words are from Act One, Scene One of Witch of Shakespeare's play. In sooth, I know not why I am so sad. It worries me. You say it worries you. But how I caught it, found it, or came by it. What stuff tis made of whereof it is born? Yes. Othello? No. Good, good try. No. Yeah, there's no minuses if you want to take a shot. Macbeth. No. no. It's the Merchant of Venice. The Merchant of Venice. And we will we'll take a, a, a <laughs> break now and we will tally the score for the first round and then set up for the second round. All right. So we'll be back in a We'd like to welcome you back after a brief break. The score for the first round, Guilford High School had 140 points. Daniel Hand High School of Madison, Connecticut had 280 points. We are now going to start round two. So slide two. Once again, we'd like to mention that the Guilford Savings Bank and Lenny and Joe's Fishtail Restaurants have been very generous sponsors. We don't have to go through the guidelines again, so let's go to uh, slide five. Categories for round two, assassins or failed assassins, battles, military actions, identify the person, mathematics, and mathematics we're going to have to give it a little longer time than some of these I don't think it can do in six to ten seconds. We'll see. And my favorite president would be category five, Abraham Lincoln. So the first question in assassins or failed assassins, your task for this category will, will be to name the person that the assassin killed or the person that the accused attempted to kill. So slide number seven, the real princip was responsible for what famous assassination? Clear. Clear. I'm, I'm sorry. Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Uh, Archduke Francis Ferdinand, exactly. Uh, he first threw a bomb that bounced off the Archduke's car. A short time later, he shot the Archduke and his wife, Sophie. After a trial, he was sentenced to prison. He died in a prison hospital. Some say that started helped to start World War I. Let's go to slide number nine. Who did Lynette Squeaky Fromm attempt to assassinate? Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford. Poor Gerald Ford. In 17 days, uh, there were two assassination attempts against him. Uh, both of these women have been released from prison, by the way. Uh, uh, slide 11. Slide 11. Who did James Earl Ray assassinate? Martin Luther King Jr. Do Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, James Earl Ray died in prison in 1998. Who did John Hinckley attempt to assassinate? Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan. Uh, out of curiosity, do you know why he, he did that? This um, so Jody Foster would yeah, notice yeah. him? The, you guys are pretty sharp. Jody Foster <laughs> was going to Yale in the Haven and he was stalking her and so on. He thought this would get him attention. It got him attention all right. <laughs> Um, number fi uh, slide 15, please. Oscar Colazzo and Grazillo Torricella attempted to assassinate what person? Clear. Oh, I'm sorry. Harry Truman. Harry Truman. Um, Colazzo was sentenced to death just before his scheduled execution in 1952. President Truman commuted the sentence to life imprisonment. President Carter set him free, and he died at age 80 in Puerto Rico in 1994. Um, let's see. Who did Lee? Who did accuse? Who did accuse Lee Harvey Oswald assassinate? Uh, JFK. 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 The next slide. Who did Charles get to? Try to assassinate. Clear. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Garfield. James Garfield. Uh, do you know the? He was hanged, by the way, in 1882. Did you know what he used as a defense against getting uh, for shooting the president? 
He said, I didn't kill the president. The doctors did. The doctor's name was that worked on him was Dr. Bliss. His first name was Doctor. So Doctor Doctor Bliss. And Doctor Bliss didn't wash his hands and wash the instruments. So he probably died from poisoning. But uh, if he was if he was shot today, he probably would have survived. <laughs> of the three men convicted for this assassination, Thomas Hagen was the only one who confessed to the shooting. Thomas Hagen, also known as Thomas Hare, what person was assassinated by Thomas Hagen in 1965? Um, Malcolm X. Malcolm X, exactly. exactly. Did either team get, so this would be for this side. John Schrank is known as the man, in case my pronunciation is not good, there's the spelling. John Schrank is known as the man who attempted to assassinate what person in 1912? Schrank was declared to be insane, by the way. Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, it's, it's written that Schrank fired one shot that passed through TR's. He had, he had a heavy overcoat on, and it had a 50-page manuscript there, and he had a, a, an eyeglass case that was hard that, that changed the trajectory of the bullet somewhat. Uh, it, did, it did lodge in TR's chest. The bullet was never removed. Um, the shrank was sent to a hospital for 29 years and took his death in 1943. Uh, so t by the way, you know the story. Teddy Roosevelt finished giving a speech, and then he, then he got medical attention. All right, let's get to slide 27. Okay. The First Battle of the Marne. Oh, I'm sorry. First Battle of the Marne. What about it? What about it? What, uh, what, what, what uh, military action was it? World War I? World War I. Okay. World War I. The category was battle or military action, but that's, that's not a problem. World War I. All right, let's go. Ge slide 29. General Edward Braddock ambushed near Fort Duquesne in 1755. What war was this involved with. The French and Indian War? The French and Indian War, we would have accepted the Seven Years' War also, but the French and Indian War. Let's go to the next one. What war was this involved with? The Battle of Buena Vista. Uh, Spanish-American War? No. Mexican-American War? Mexican-American War. Mexican-American War. The Battle of Bull Run or Manassas. July 21st, 1861, I'm sorry. The American Civil War. Yes, exactly. American Civil War, we would have accepted the war between the states, and if you're from the south, they call it the War of Northern Aggression. Let's get to number 35. The Battle of Chateau Terry, June 1918. Oh, World, World War I? World War One. yes. By 37. September 15, 1950, landing at Incheon. Clear. Clear. I'm sorry. Uh, the Korean War? The Korean War. More than 33,600 Americans died in that war. 39. A 77-day siege of Kaesan started on January 21, 1968. The Vietnam War. The Vietnam War. We would have accepted the Second Indochina War also. That is correct. The Battle of Manila Bay, May 1st, 1898. The Spanish-American War? This one is the Spanish-American War. The Spanish-American War, yes. The next slide will have the 20-point bonus question. I decide, at this side. Louis XIV fought England, the Dutch Netherlands, and the Austrian Habsburgs from 1701 to 1714, Blumhelm would be one of the battles in 1704. Um, war, um, war, uh, Spanish, Spanish, um, war of, uh, Spanish war of, uh, Spanish war? Uh, did the other team take it? Uh, 
the Franco-Prussian War? No. They were pretty close. The War of Spanish Secession. Oh, that's what they were pretty close. Missing. Uh, category three will consist of eight ten-point toss-up questions. If a team, we don't have to go through all that. All right, uh, slide 47, identify this person. John Kerry. John Kerry, the 68th Secretary of State. He married Teresa Hines of the Hines Ketchup Dynasty in 1995. Um, 49. Uh, who's Joe Biden? Joseph Biden, yes. Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., yes. The next slide will have one of these random 40-point bonus questions that may be on any, any topic, and it's a toss-up. If you drove at, at an average speed of 66 miles per hour, what distance in miles did you drive in 99 minutes? Yes, we, it's, it's 108.9, but we will accept 109 or 108. Yes, exactly correct. Let's get back to the other category and slide 54. Chris Christie? Chris Christie, Chris Christie. The next slide, identify the person. Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg, yes. At the next slide, identify the person. Uh, Angela Merkel. Exactly, by the way, exactly. Angela Merkel. Uh, she studied physics and earned a doctorate. Not too shabby. Hmm. Uh, uh, the next slide, please. Identify the person. I met her, by the way. Identify the person. Here. Here. Oh. I'm sorry. Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks. And j just for the heck of it, um, look at the next slide. It's a picture I took of her, took of her in 1990. It's not the best quality, but I met her in Stratford, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the uh, next slide, 63. Identify the person. Yeah. Uh, Mitt Romney. Yes, Willard Mitt Romney. Who's the next person? John Boehner. John Boehner, yes. John Boehner. All right, here's the, ch the one, sh this side, good. Identify the, all right. The next slide will have a 20 point bonus question. If a team answers, well, you said this side. So who, slide 68 then. Here. Condoleezza Rice? No. It, it, you're going to see it's mm -hmm. interesting, but no. Uh, Susan Rice. Susan Elizabeth Rice. Um, so the president wanted her to be Secretary of State. He couldn't get that through, so he gave her a, a job as National Security Advisor. But it's, it's, you were close, but it's a different Rice, though. Susan Elizabeth Rice. Uh, the next will be another 40-point question. The next slide will have a 40-point toss-up random bonus question. And that will be slide 71. Uh, you, you didn't know how to lock it, but are you going to read it first, or? Um, all right. Can you put, put up 71, then? What's up? No. All right. On February 4th. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I, I didn't know. I didn't know. Sorry. Yellen? Yes. That's a, that's a harder yeah. question, by the way. Yeah. Janet Sorry, Louise I, I was, Yellen. I thought you would arm it. And she's not too shabby, but look at her credentials also. Right, the next category is mathematics, and uh, some of these may take more than six to ten seconds. So, slide 74, please. A person who bought 90 peaches took 30% of the store's peaches. How many peaches did the store have left? Yes. 
Yes. 210? Yes, yes, 210. Let me put up the next, next slide. All right, well, this is the next question. Uh, the length of each side of a square with area 1,600 square inches is increased by 20 inches. What is the resulting area? Can you uh, clear it, please? I'm sorry. 3,600 square inches. 3,600, 3,600. Let's go to the next slide, please. If four pounds of apples cost M cents, and 10 pounds of apples cost what? I'm sorry. Uh, 10 M divided by four. Mm. Like 10 four. Five M. No, I don't really believe so. This side? I believe the answer would be 2.5 M cents. That's the same. That's five M's. Oh, okay. Um, uh, that's all right. You did give some credit. Uh, yeah. I, in fact, I had these checked and kind of checked, but that didn't come up. That's right. Yeah. No, not a problem. Let's go to slide 80. Betty wished to build a rectangular dog run along the side of her garage. The garage will serve as one of the longer sides of the run. If she has 50 feet of fencing and wishes the run to be three times longer than it is wide, how many square feet will the fencing enclose? I'm sorry. That's 300 square feet? Exactly. exactly. Let's get to the next slide 82. Barb is building a bookcase. She wants the bookcase to be 5 feet tall and 12 feet wide and have corners with 90 degree angles. To make the bookcase more rigid, she will place a brace from the upper right hand corner to the lower left corner. How long will the brace be? Thirteen. 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 The next one, simplify the following expression. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. Negative 11x minus 12y. I have, uh, oh. that's not what I have, no. Okay. Um, the side. I had these checked by four different people. 10x plus 12. I have negative 25 or minus 25x plus 12y. Hmm. Oh. All right, let's go to the uh, 86. 86. If the sum of two numbers is 20 and one of those numbers is three times the other, what is a smaller number? I'm sorry. Five. 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 Let's go to slide 88. What would be the answer to this? I'm sorry. Yes. Twelve? No. Six. 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 Thirty. The next slide will have the 20 point bonus question. Did either? All right, then. Let's go to slide 91. What is the smallest value of x that satisfies the equation? Negative 1? No. Negative three minus three would also be accepted. Negative three. All right, the next slide will have question one from category five, Abraham Lincoln. And that picture is thought to be the last picture taken of President Lincoln before he was killed. Let's go to slide 94. If you take the number of children Abraham and Mary Lincoln had and deduct the number of children that did not live past the age of 20, what number would you come up with? Yeah. I'm sorry. Two? No. Three? No. Okay. One. Oh, three. Uh, just, just for the heck of it. Wait, three minus four. Okay, never mind. Uh, 
Thomas, Ted, Lincoln, uh, he lived to about 18 years of age. Willie lived to uh, about 11 years of age. Eddie was about three years old. And uh, Robert, with some references say he was 82, some say he was 83, but he died in 1926. He's the only one that had a normal, and he became very wealthy, by the way. Hmm. Um, let's go to slide 96. He was President Lincoln's Secretary of the Treasury. He thought that he should have been president, not Lincoln. Uh, Chase? Samuel P. Chase, yes, exactly. Let's get to 98. Who was Lincoln's Secretary of State? He was targeted to be killed the night that Lincoln was shot on April 14, 1865. Yes. Um, Seward? William Seward. He was viciously attacked and stabbed by Louis Payne. He was not killed, but he was uh, badly scarred. Uh, he didn't like to have pictures taken of that site afterwards. But Louis Payne was hanged for, for that act. Let's go to slide 100. Name at least three of the four loyal border states that President Lincoln wanted to remain in the Union. At least three of the four. Yes. Kentucky? Yes. West Virginia and Maryland? I've always said West Virginia, because West Virginia is a, is a state, I can't use the term that they used to describe that state, because it was born in 1863 during the war. But yes, I would accept West Virginia. It's, it's okay. Delaware, Maryland, Kentucky, and Missouri, but I would accept West Virginia. So yes. Okay. Maryland. Um, let's go to slide 102. Name at least one of the two important young private secretaries that lived in the White House they were both very loyal to President Lincoln. It took them about 15 years to write a 10-volume book about Lincoln. Today, the term chief of staff or other terms would be used, but they were private secretaries. Uh, name at least one of these two individuals. Don't think you guess that. There are no minuses. All right. Uh, John Milton Hay or John George Nicolay. Uh, Hay later served as Secretary of State under President Kinley and Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, he married into money and he became very wealthy, by the way, John Milton Hay. All right, let's go to 104. The which Lincoln speech, oh, hold, hold it for a second, that you, you, you have it done, if, if that's fair. In which Lincoln speech are these words found? with malice toward none, with charity for all, with the firmness in the right, as God gives us the right, let us strive out to finish the work we are in. His second inaugural address. Yes, the second inaugural address. Um, let's go to slide 106. James Mason and John Slidell were on their way to Europe to seek support for the Confederacy. November 8, 1861, they were taken off a British ship and arrested. England was furious. Lincoln reportedly said, one war at a time. He didn't want to have another war with England, so he, Lincoln had the two men released. This incident is generally known by what name? Time? That would be the Trent Affair. The Trent was a British ship. Hmm. Trent was a British ship. Let's go to slide 108. In 1864, a man who was a civilian was arrested as a copperhead in Indiana. The regular civil courts were operating in Indiana. Lincoln had him tried by a military commission. He was sentenced to be hanged. Name the 1866 U.S. Supreme Court case that dealt with this. It's ex parte Milligan. Hmm. Milligan was not hanged. It's kind of interesting. This was 1866 after the war was over. Lincoln was dead, but the Supreme Court said Lincoln was wrong. Um, the 20 point bonus question, either side. So this is, this is a toss up. This is a toss up. Name the chief. Um, what is it all right? Well, let me read the question. Name the chief justice of the United States 
Supreme Court who recited the oath of office to Abraham Lincoln on March 4, 1861. He was known for his far-reaching opinion in the 1857 Dred Scott decision. Tawny? Yes, Roger Tawny. It's spelled T-A-N-E-Y, hmm. but it's pronounced Tawny. This is the end of round two. We're going to take another break, and then we'll see what the final score is. So, where we are.